Okay, welcome back uh, to this course on polymer chemistry and today we are going to move from our discussion on step growth polymers to chain growth polymerization. And we will begin with radical chain polymerization for about 4 to 5 lectures followed by ionic polymerization and other types of chain polymerization later lectures. In this lecture, uh, we are going to cover uh, general features of chain polymerization, which we will basically revisit uh, from our introduction lecture. And then we will talk about feasibility of chain polymerization, how the structure of monomers determines which type of initiator we should choose and different modes of propagation of a free radical in a free radical polymerization different types of initiator and initiator efficiency. Now, let us revisit uh, the discussion we had on chain polymerization in first two lectures during introduction. What are the general features of a chain polymerization process? In the step polymerization, we have seen that we need at least two functional groups, so that the reaction can happen between the functional group. But in case of chain polymerization, we need one functional group, monofunctional group in most cases it is a double bond. We can do polymerization, chain polymerization with more than one functional group as well, but then in that case like the previous case of step polymerization, it will give cross linking in the polymerization, not the complete linear polymerization. So, if you have only one functional group in this case a double bond, it is sufficient to give you a linear polymers. Now, polymerization chain polymerization are in general consist of three steps, three main steps initiation, propagation and termination. In initiation step, uh, initiator a reactive species R is formed from initiator molecule I. This reactive species then react with a monomer gives you a chain initiating species. This will initiate chain by reaction reacting with further monomers forming extended chain and this will progress to make a complete polymers. So, this is part of initiation step, this is propagation step and also we have termination step. You also have another step, you know another possible step like transfer reactions which we will discuss uh, when it uh, necessary. So, in this case you require a reactive species to initiate the polymer chain unlike in step polymerization where you did not require a in a reactive species and depending on this nature of this reacting species R plus, you can classify this chain polymerization reactions in different types. For example, if the R star is the reactive species in this case is a free radical, then we, we name this reaction or polymerization as a free radical polymerization. If this is a cation, then it is a cationic polymerization. If this is anion, then it is a anionic polymerization. Chain polymerization could be other types as well. For example, polymers using uh, type of other type of catalyst like Zygdan Lato catalyst, and also it could be different other types which are not the majority or a major class of chain polymerization, but they also are part of the group of chain polymerization. For example, ring opening polymerization, group transfer polymerization, and so on. We'll talk about these polymerizations when. Uh, in a later lectures uh, uh, briefly. We will come back to the general features of uh, chain polymerization. We uh, by this time we know that we can build linear polymers in chain polymers from a monofunctional group, then poly chain polymerization usually consists of three main step initiation, propagation and termination. And usually there is no loss of molecular fragments like in case of step polymers, we had some small molecular 
condensates were coming out during polymerization process, but in this case there is no loss of fragments. And we also know from our original discussion that we do not require high conversion, Li unlike a step growth polymerization where we require a high, high conversions to have a high molecular weight. In this case, we do not require a high uh, conversions to build a high molecular weight. If you recollect from the discussion we had in the first two lectures that in case of chain polymerization, the molecular weights builds very soon and then it says at very low con conversion itself, it builds very high molecular weight and the molecular weight remains as high, you know, at very high during the conversion. There are some other things might uh, results in change in this nature of the this line at very high conversion, which will come back uh, in the appropriate time. So, in this case we have seen from earlier case as well and earlier discussion as well that at a very low conversion itself molecular weight um, is obtained is high and at the time progress more and more number polymer chains form and, and uh, but the molecular weight remains more or less uh, similar which is very high. Now, in this uh, polymerization um, chain, chain polymerization monomers are monomer is present throughout, but it concentration decreases uh, gradually or steadily. And we also know that in during this chain polymerization, we have only monomer or high molecular weight polymers. We do not have this intermediate molecular weight oligomers like in step growth polymerization. We have either monomer and high molecular weight polymers and also have you know this initiator molecules and and solvent if required. This uh, chain in case of chain growth polymerization, a chain grows only by addition of the reactive species or the monomer at the end, at one end of the growing chain. If the polymer progress, then a monomer is always added at the end of the polymers to grow the chain further. And these chain reactions are typically have very high exotherms and low activation energy. And if you just think little more about the mechanism of uh, this chain polymerization, typically you have a pi bond is converting to a sigma bond during this chain polymerization or which is starting from a double bond. Now, this is having a definitely having a exothermic nature this this reaction and we also know that we also can imagine that when the monomers add on to form a high molecular polymers the translation entropy decreases. So, in this case the entropy change is also lower. So, if you think about the thermodynamics of this chain polymerization briefly at this moment, because this is exothermic negative and this is also negative. So, there is a competition between these two term and in normal temperature typically the reaction temperature there is a the temperature where we do reactions this dominates. So, the reaction this chain polymerization are thermodynamically feasible in most cases or not. This del G is less than 0 for the typical temperature where we do reactions in the lab, which means that most of this double bond containing monomers should polymerize given its thermodynamic feasibility. But if you think there is a kinetic about the kinetic factor, not, not every monomer, not every monomer containing double bond can be polymerized with every type of initiator. That depends upon the structure, the, the initiator 
which is best or which can polymerize a monomer containing a double bond will depend upon the monomer structure. For example, if we take a simple monomer So, we take a very simple monomer like this, where y is a substituent. Now, the feasibility of these monomers to undergo polymerization, chain polymerization by a radical or a cation or a anion would depend upon the reactivity of this double bond and also the stability of the species which formed due to reaction of this monomer and the reactive species R star which we talked about in the last, uh, last page, which in turn depends upon the inductive effect and the resonance resonating effect of this substituent group Y. For example, if we have say Y as a electron withdrawing group as nitrile. So, if I consider a molecule like this C n. Now, it is a electron withdrawing group which means that because this is present the reactivity of this double bond towards say electrophile increases and also if there is an ionic charge here which can be easily stabilized by the resonating effect of the nitrile group. So, if I have a anionic species reacting with this monomer, it will form for example, say C H 2 Now, it can stabilize and form like this. So, this is this monomer acryl nitrile will be very much feasible, you know, the reaction of this monomer will be feasible by a anionic initiator. So, it can undergo chain polymerization by an anionic initiator, because you have a electron withdrawing group which can, which actually increases the reactivity of this double bond towards the electrophile and also it stabilizes the reactive species which formed because of the reaction of this monomer with the reactive species. But if you have a cationic initiator for this case, now if you have a, this was an anionic initiator. If you have a cationic initiator for this case, then if it has to react and form something like this, now this will not be stabilized by this substituents. So, this monomers will not undergo a cationic polymerization. It will only under it will undergo anionic polymerization. Now, if you have a radical for example, if you have a radical initiator then it will form now is this can also get stabilized by this process of resonance. Okay which means that this acryl nitrile monomer can be polymerized by a anionic initiator and a radical initiator, but not by a cationic initiator. We will take some other example. For example, we have A monomer like this, it could be a 
aldehyde group the substitution could be aldehyde group or a say ketone or a acid or a ester or a amine amide like this. So, it could be any of these groups. Now, when this monomers undergo anionic polymerization, it will form a species like this. Okay, it could be any of these species which we wrote here. Now, in this case also, this can get stabilized by resonance. and this will form this. So, this is also a another set of monomers which can be easily polymerized by a anionic initiator. Similarly, this can be also polymerized for a radical radical polymerization because again this like the earlier case this can undergo resonance and form this. Okay. So, this type of monomer which contain this set of there is a carbonyl, carbonyl group here, they can easily undergo anionic polymerization, they can undergo radical polymerization, but like the earlier case they cannot, this set of monomers cannot undergo a chain polymerization initiated by a cationic species, because then if you have a cationic group here, it will not be stabilized by resonance. Now, if we talk about uh, this monomer, now this monomer, if I polymerize with a cationic initiator. then it will be a cationic species now. Now, again this can be stabilized by resonance like this. So, if you have a monomer like this, then it can be polymerized by cationic species, anionic, no it cannot be polymerized by an cannot be polymerized by anionic species, because if you have a, a strong electron withdrawing group here. So, anionic uh, cannot be, if you have a, a resonating group here, which is electron donating, electron pushing. So, it cannot stabilize a anionic group here. Even if there is a weak electron withdrawing group of uh, electron effect of this OR group by inductive effect. Now, if you have a monomer like this styrene, if you have a monomer like styrene, then what happen if you have an anionic case? it have other resonating structures. If you have a cationic, and 
and so a radical. If you have a radical group, then it can also be stabilized by by this substituent group. Okay. Now, if I have a react, if you have a monomer like styrene, you can see that in each of these cases, anionic, cationic, and radical, the reactive species which is forming because of the reaction of the monomer with the react the previous reactive species can be easily stabilized by a resonating structure in both all the three cases. So, styrene is an example where styrene can be polymerized either by anionic, cationic or a radical group as well as, as well as a radical group. So, these are the examples how the structure of monomer will determine whether it can undergo chain polymerization by anionic species, anionic initiator or a cationic initiator or radical initiator. And we have seen the examples of uh, several monomers and let us uh, see the uh, table and uh, we sort of summarize whatever we have just learned in first last 5-10 minutes. Uh, so, if I have a simple monomer like this, if I can uh, have Y as uh, C O R, then we know it is can be polymerized by both uh, radical and anionic. It cannot be polymerized by cationic. If you have a acid or ester or amide, it can also be polymerized by radical and anionic. If you have a nitrile, Again, it can be polymerized by radical and anionic, not by cation. For example, if you have a if your substitution is a phenyl group, a styrene, case of styrene, then it can be polymerized by all three. And if you have a another double bond hanging from the uh, uh, the original double bond, then also it can be stabilized by any of these three mechanisms: anion, cation, cation, anionic, cationic, and radical. So it can be polymerized by all three mechanism. We just seen that if it is a ether, then it can be polymerized by cationic. It can be difficultly polymerized by radical also, but the uh, most preferred choice of uh, polymerizing a ether group um, hanging from a double bond is to use cationic polymerization. If it is a halogen, then its halogen is having a a weak uh, inductive effect, uh, electron withdrawing inductive effect and uh, weak uh, electron donating uh, or electron pushing resonating effect. So, uh, because both these electron donating and electron withdrawing uh, strains are uh, weak, so it actually does not get polymerized either by anionic or cationic, it only gets polymerized by the radical mechanism like vinyl chloride and for example. So, now there are other possible substitutes we you can imagine and depending on the chemistry behind it you can uh, find out uh, or you can decide whether now which one to try out first, which is the most easiest way it can get polymerized and if it is polymer can be polymerized by radical that is the most easiest uh, way of polymerizing you know, polymer process of these three. So, we come back now only to radical polymerization. Radical polymerization, we are talking about um, the chain polymerization and different structure and different initiator. Now, we start uh, solely on radical chain polymerization. So, what are the types we can what types of monomers can be used for uh, radical polymerization? Monomer containing double bond between carbon atom, the examples we have just seen ethylene, styrene, butadiene, isoprene, etcetera. And if the monomer containing electron donate withdrawing group, then it the polymerizability of that double bond actually goes up because the reasons we just talked about in last 10 15 minutes. So, examples like methyl methacrylate, acrylamide 
vinyl chloride, acrylonide, vinyl acetate, etc., can be easily and very easily polymerizable by a radical initiator. Now, what are the monomers? It is uh, difficult to polymerize or you know, cannot be polymerized at all. If, if there are more substitutions with both the carbon atoms, in the example we said just showed in the last uh, uh, pages where you have CH2, CHY instead of one, one substitution, if you have substitution in both the carbon, then it becomes more difficult. For example, if you compare between 1 butene and 2 butene, it is easier to polymerize 1 butene than uh, 2 butene. And if it is, if the substitution is bulky, so like if you have a uh, diphenyl ethylene, 1, 1 diphenyl ethylene, then it is uh, very difficult to polymerize and if you have tri substituted or tetra substituted, then also it is very difficult to polymerize. So, if I if I want to summarize just uh, plain uh, structure in terms of substitutions, if you have no substitution, it is work fine in radical. If you have mono substituted, it works fine except the case where it is CSP for propylene, we will come back of why it is so. And if you, if you have di substitution in single carbon and unless they are not bulky, it usually work. If they are very bulky, then because of the steric reasons, they do not work. And the, now, if from here, if you go more for more and more substitution, the reactions become more and more difficult like this is very difficult and these two tri substitute and tetra substitute almost, almost never works in a, a radical polymerization. So, what I mean in the case of this allylic monomer, for example, the propylene we just mentioned in the last slide, if you have a radical, then it can react with a poly, pro, propylene to form a, a, a initiating a chain ending species release, which can react with the other propylene monomer and uh, progress the chain or propagate the polymer chain. And this can be stabilized inductively by this. So, there should not be any problem uh, in that sense. But if you compare the other alternative, which is shown here, if this R dot abstract a hydrogen from here from a neutral species R H, then you have this radical species generated. Now, which is which is even much stab, stable, stabler than the previous case, because it here in this case it is stabilized by resonance. So, in most cases this reaction, this reaction dominates than this reaction. So, it is this is one of the cases of transfer. So, this is uh, for these reasons, this pro propylene is difficult to polymerize by radical and this does not this doesn't happen if you have a say monomer like uh, methyl methacrylate, where uh, there is a, is not uh, possible, this, this possibility does not arise. Okay, now, how if, if you have a monomer like this? CH2, again come back to that very simple monomer. Now, this can react with R star, R star can react on this carbon or this carbon. If it reacts with this, this carbon, then it forms where? Okay. And if this reacts with this carbon, then it forms something like this. Now, how does it propagate? This can react with either of these two carbon in terms of possibilities. So, if it react with this, then it forms if this react with the other side, then it forms
a species like this. Now, given these two structure, now the fact that this monomers is reacting with this reacting species, which means that whether this is a radical or a cation or anion will, will get stabilized by the substitution y present. So, it is it is always uh, given this and this choice because the present of presence of the stabilizing group y as a substituent this reaction this side is always preferred unlike not this. So, approach of r to this carbon is always always preferred over this carbon. Now, if you have, so this is dominating or this is almost exclusively formed compared to this okay, because of the electronic stabilization of the y group. Now, this can for the same reason, this is preferred compared to this and here it is it is an additional factor that you have a you have a group the approach of this if if it is approach from this side it will be even sterically hindered so it is approach from this carbon is is preferred both electronically and sterically so if i write this side as head and this is tail then finally, we get a polymer which has in head tail head tail arrangement. Okay. So, in chain polymerization, you have finally, when the polymer formed, you get a head tail head tail arrangement, not any of this, if, if whether it is a head or tail does not matter, you can have a tail head, tail head, tail head arrangement as well, does not matter, but it is basically alternate head, tail, head, tail, head, tail type arrangement in the poly, um, in the polymer uh, structure of the monomers. This is because of both sterical electronic and steric reasons. Now, we are talking about radical polymerization and what are the different types of initiator we can use and what is the source for uh, in initiator uh, we, we require a radical species to initiate the polymer chain and we now we look at what are the molecules which or what are the possible ways we can generate radical in the reaction medium now to have a radical species to, to generate a radical species in the reaction medium, you, you should always prefer or it is, uh, it is very um, logical that uh, the radical should not generate at uh, in ambient conditions uh, like room temperature, where you store this uh, your, your monomer or the initiator itself. While storing it should not uh, generate radicals or it is the, the initiator molecule should not be such that it is very difficult, you require very high temperature to generate a radical form that initiator molecules. So, and also this radical uh, the initiator molecule should generate radical in a moderate rate, so that they can be utilized in the reaction, it should not be very fast if it is very fast radical generation, then the reaction will be extremely fast and because this is a chain polymerization or exothermic reaction is very fast, then you can imagine the amount of heat generated during the reaction, which could be a um, hazard, it can actually explode if it the reaction rate is too high and if it is too slow, then, then it the your reaction will take much longer, if your radical generation is too low, then your reaction will take much much uh, longer time. So, uh, the three criteria say initiator should 
fulfill one is that it should be readily available of course uh, um, especially for commercial application it should be readily available and it should be stable at uh, ambient condition if you are storing it in ambient condition at room temperature if you, even if you are storing in a refrigerator it should be stable in that condition okay it should not generate radical uh, under the condition of storage and of course the third one we just talked about that uh, it should generate radical in a practical rate uh, at normal reaction temperature it should not be too slow for the reactions to take much longer time or it should not be too high then it there are uh, there are of you know, possibilities of uh, hazard because of uh, exothermic reactions happening uh, in much faster rate so what are the uh, initiation uh, initiators we are initiated procedure we typically use in a radical chain polymerization uh, first one is uh, thermal initiator and thermal initiator is uh, is a initiation by uh, homolysis of a molecule by thermal by thermal energy leading to formation of two radicals and the typically here we are talking about uh, homolytically cleaving one bond and making two radical now the bond energy should be such a that 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 bond should not cleave uh, at low temperature at room temperature or it should not be very high uh, the bond energy should not be very high so that you require a much higher temperature to break that um, homolytically so the typical range of bond energy bond energy which are used uh, for an initiator uh, to be applicable as a thermal initiator is around 100 to 170 kilojoule per mole and typically if you have these peroxides or for these SS bonds or if you have you know bonds in your molecules these these bonds typically having bond dissociation energy of this uh, range so they form on heating and in normal uh, the reaction temperature they form radical each molecule form two radicals for example, if you consider these peroxides, could be acyl peroxide, acetyl or benzoyl. For example, if I write the structure of benzoyl peroxide. can break homolytically on thermal energy on heating to CO dot. Now, we can have alkyl peroxides as well. For example, Q mile or Tarsary butyl peroxides let us take example of Q mile peroxide it can dissociate into two such radicals also these hydroperoxides for example tertiary butyl hydroperoxide it can also undergo
homolytic cleavage forming two radicals. So, other examples also like par esters, let us talk about in the next page. For example, tertiary butyl phenyl benzoate. It can break from here and form two different uh, radicals. Now, the other main type of uh, initiator, thermal initiator are azo compounds. For example, Two two dash azo bis isobutyl or nitrile, which is most commonly named as or called as AIBN, which is having this following structure. Now this can break into two species, let us write in the next page. Class N 2. Now, in this case this the bond C n bond is not this this bond is not of the having that bond dissociation energy between 100 to 170 kilojoule per mole that is uh, the uh, bond energy optimal bond energy we talked about it is actually having higher 290 kilojoule per mole, but because of this nitrogen generation this molecule uh, this dissociation also becomes uh, feasible or very uh, very much feasible at uh, normal reaction temperature. Other examples of azo compounds are, uh, for example, 4 4 dash azo bis cyanohaluric acid, These are the examples, typical example of uh, these uh, azo compounds. Now, this this compound specialty is that it is water soluble, water soluble at pH greater than seven. So you can use this azo compounds at aqueous medium as well, so that it can be used for uh, generating uh, or or uh, doing radical polymerization is aqueous medium as well whereas AIBN can be used uh, in the radical polymerization in organic uh, solvents or organic medium. The other uh, other types of um, this uh, radical initiator are uh, like for example, disulfides. I have R s and S r giving to R s dot. Or it have tetragenes which breaking and giving to R n two R two n dot plus nitrogen or it could be other peroxides for example you have potassium
we can have these peroxides as well. Okay, so, these are the typical examples of the uh, radical initiators. These are the generally used uh, radical initiator and most common is uh, EIBN and benzoyl peroxides which are used in the lab. Now, this radical is gets gen generated from a initiator species. Now, if I want to find out how fast this radical generation happen, we can write this rate equation which is basically dissociation constant multiplied by the this follows first order kinetics. So, it is multiplied by initial concentration which will give you this on integration where I 0 is the concentration of initi initiator at t is equal to 0 and this is some other t. Now, if you define t half where a, temp a time where i is i 0 by 2, if you define t half as the time where the concentration of, of initiator has halved, then you can write t half is you can put i is i 0 by 2, you can get this. So, from the dissociation constant you can get the t half value and this dissociation constant also or the um, rate constant for dissociation reaction also depend upon the temperature where you are doing your reaction. Now, if you if you want to do a reaction and you you should have prior knowledge about the initiator molecule, prior knowledge about their t half value or or the time it takes to become half, then you can choose your reaction temperature or if you want to do your reaction some particular temperature or a range of temperature, then you, you can choose the proper initiator for your reaction. For example, if I look at the t half values for the some commonly used uh, initiator for example, EI, if I take uh, very commonly used example like EIBN and benzoyl peroxide say BPO benzoyl peroxide and if I write the values of T half T half then let us have these numbers so if these are the t half numbers for commonly used commonly used uh, initiator eibn and bpo so, EIBN have T F value at 50 degree centigrade about 74 hours, whereas at 100 degree centigrade it has a T half of 7.2 minutes. Okay. That means, if you use EIBN as an initiator for a reaction which you are carrying out at 100 degree centigrade, then your reaction is very fast, it will complete and all the EIBN at least half of the EIBN will be consumed in all 7 minutes. So, your, you can imagine your reaction is very fast. Whereas, if you do it at 50 degree centigrade, then even at 74 hours, so almost like 3 days you have uh, half, half of the initiator is uh, 
dissociated to form radicals. So, that is that means it is too slow a reaction if you do it at 50 degree centigrade. So, for that is examples EIBN is typically uh, used at say around uh, 60 to 80 degree centigrade and benzoyl peroxide typical reaction temperature is uh, between 80 to 95 degree centigrade. And T half value for uh, at 10 hours the temperature at which uh, T half value becomes 10 hours it is typically uh, the most uh, you know, what I say most uh, used uh, temperature where T half is 10 hours and for that uh, EIBN is about 60 degree centigrade and BPO is uh, about 65 degree centigrade, but it is all depends upon how fast you want to carry out a reaction you have to choose your temperature accordingly. For example, EIBN if you want to use a 100 degree it is too fast a reaction. So, you it is always recommended that you should use EIBN at this range and BPO in and this range to have a moderate reaction rate. Uh, we have and typical these values of KDs are uh, typical values of uh, KD for thermal initiator is 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 9 second inverse and um, the usage range where your K D is uh, from 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 6 centimeter. The temperature where your K D is lies uh, between this that is the temperature where the reaction is typically done. So, we have now know that uh, what are the molecules are typically used for thermal uh, initiation and uh, what are uh, the criteria in that uh, initiator molecule should be and looking at the T half values at different temperature we should uh, choose a temperature and a initiator combination for a particular reaction. If you want to do a reaction for a particular temperature then you should choose a initiator molecule or a initiator molecule accordingly. So, now let us move to other type of uh, initiator and next uh, let us look for redox initiator. So, let us look for redox initiators. And the name suggests if you have a reductant and you have a oxidants oxidants. So, for example, if you have a peroxide plus a this oxidizing agent, so plus a reducing agent. For example, you have a hydrogen peroxide plus ferrous salts giving to H minus plus H O dot plus C 3 plus. Instead of hydrogen peroxide you can use the other peroxides or hydroperoxides as well. And in this case you can use other ions as well. these are the types you can use here and you can type here, but the general reaction is same and the reaction is much faster and it can be done at, uh, at room temperature or even at low temperature 0 to 5 degree centigrade or something like if you want to do a reaction at low temperature for whatever reason then this is the initiator system you can apply and as these things are soluble in aqueous medium you can carry out the aqueous radical polymerization using 
uh, redox initiator like this or even if you want to do a uh, your radical polymerization in emulsions then also this type of reactions can be uh, this initiator can be used. The other other type of redox initiator uh, another example of redox initiator is uh, per sulphate and diamine plus diamine again a combination of uh, redox uh, reducing and oxidizing agents this is benzoyl peroxide and say in an diethyl i mean if you r is ethyl group then it reacts and give this Now, K D of this reaction is at 60 degrees centigrade, whereas K D for B P O at 90 degrees centigrade was 1.33 into 10 to the power minus 4 second inverse, which means that this is much faster, so, this redox reaction is much faster. So, generation of radical by redox initiator can be done at much lower temperature, room temperature or even lower temperature whereas, in BPO, uh, the case of thermal initiator, the reaction rate is uh, much lower. So, you need a higher temperature for doing the uh, polymerization reaction. So, what we will do in the next lecture? We'll continue this uh, the other types of uh, initiator and including the remain, remaining example of uh, the uh, redox uh, the possibilities of redox initiator. So, we will come back and start uh, in the next lecture from uh, this redox uh, exa other examples of redox uh, initiators.